guys, it's Adriana here from Addu Lab. I'm your resident SEO specialist, and today we're gonna talk about choosing a brand name. Now, a brand name is what your website or what your company is called, and this is really important. Now, your brand name is how your company's culture is perceived, and it's the packaging of your company. But most importantly, your brand name is how you appear on Google search results. And it's also how Google thinks about you. So you wanna make sure that you are using keywords and lots of other important factors when choosing a brand name. We're gonna talk about all of these eight SEO hacks in this video today. And the reason this is so important is because we're gonna teach you how to choose a domain name so that you rank higher on Google search results for the keywords in your industry or niche. And if you're having trouble, you know, getting shown on Google search results or having people, you know, come to your website, then this video is definitely for you. All right, guys, we're gonna dive into these eight SEO hacks, but before I begin, make sure to subscribe down below so you don't miss out on our other SEO videos. We're gonna have these coming out many times a week, so I don't want you to miss out on those. So definitely subscribe right now, and then we're gonna dive into these tips. All right, so the big question here is, if people don't know what your brand is right now, they're not really familiar with your company's name, how are you going to show up in search results? Now, having a domain name that contains keywords can help you achieve this. So if you use keywords in your domain name, this is a great little hack here. You can kind of give relevancy signals or clues to Google about what your website is all about. So if you, for example, have you know, a website that sells supplies for puppies and your name is Puppy Pros, well, Google's gonna understand this website has something to do with puppies and maybe they sell you know, stuff on their website for puppies, it's puppy related. This is a relevancy signal and will help you get a little bit more traction and rank for those terms that are puppy related because Google's understanding that this website has chosen the word puppy in their domain name, so it's going to be very important to this website. So that is the number one hack for creating a nice domain name is to make sure to include keywords. So we're gonna go over this a little bit more. We don't wanna spam Google and we don't wanna abuse this, but we wanna make sure that we're using this in a way that just tells Google, hey, this is what our website sells, this is what our website specializes in, and it's great also for visitors because people kinda quickly just look at your domain name and say, hmm, do I wanna click on this? Does it look like it makes sense for the search results? And so that's also a factor that's you know related to human psychology and human nature. You wanna make sure you're making a good impression that it's relevant and it makes sense. And since your domain name is actually one of the 200 plus ranking factors in Google's algorithm, having keywords in your domain name and your brand name is a great way to tell Google, hey, this is what we specialize in, this is what we sell. And so I do recommend having the keyword that you choose in the beginning portion of your domain name because it carries more weight and it also is easy to read. It makes more sense. Okay, this is what this website's all about. All right, so the second SEO hack is to target a keyword with high competition and high search volume. Now, what does that mean? High search volume means that a lot of people are searching for this term on Google. So they're going into the search bar and they're typing this term in and that's great. You want to target a keyword that a lot of people are searching for. You want it to have high search volume, high traffic. This is good, why? because you wouldn't want to target a search term or a keyword that no one is looking for because it's a waste of a keyword. It's, it's a waste of your time basically targeting a keyword that no one's looking for because that's not gonna bring in traffic. And then the high competition, well, this has to deal with, you know, if a lot of people are trying to target this keyword, then it's very sought after and it has a correlation with being a high search volume term. So normally a term that has a high search volume also has a high competition and it's okay to target a term, a keyword that has a high competition on your homepage because this is the exception to the rule. Normally I recommend that people target a low competition keyword on their products and other pages 
because it gives you a chance to rank for it. But on your homepage, this is an exception. You're telling Google, this is what my website is mainly about. This is the holy grail of keywords that I'm trying to rank for. So please let me rank for, you know, hiking gear. And this is a term that, you know, if you do some keyword research, which I highly recommend doing to find which keywords have the high competition and the high search volume, you will see if the keyword that you're thinking about using for your domain name or your brand name is even a good keyword to go after. So you can use a free tool like Google's Keyword Planner that is available on Google AdWords or also known as Google Ads. And you can see, you know, does this keyword have a high search volume? Is it high competition? So if you go on there and you see, okay, hiking gear has 100,000 searches per month and it's high competition, well, that's great because that means that this keyword is highly sought after and a lot of people are looking to buy hiking gear or get information about hiking gear and you can be the website that fulfills that for them. Now, when it comes to keywords, you don't wanna be overly broad or too specific. So an example is I've chosen hiking gear. This is pretty specific because we know what kind of gear it is. It's for hiking, but an overly broad keyword that I would probably avoid would be gear. Now, what kind of gear are you selling? Is it fishing gear? You know, is it ballet gear? Is it dance gear? I, I don't know. Is it boat gear? I'm not sure. So you want to, you know, kind of narrow it down a little bit so that you can tell Google, this is what I'm trying to sell. This is what my website's about, but it also has a high search volume. So then that is the golden keyword to use. You want to have it just right. The third SEO hack is to make sure that your brand name doesn't exist already. I know this might sound like a no brainer, but sometimes people don't do the research before buying a domain name and this is not a good practice. So make sure that if you're thinking about buying a domain name or having a brand name that you Google it first and see what kind of results show up. You know, what brand names are showing up on that first page of Google, because those are the people that you're going to be competing with. So you want to make sure that it's unique. Basically, you want a brand name that doesn't sound like other people because you don't want there to be confusion. Also, if your brand name is too similar to someone else's, then you're going to be competing with them and it's a very hard uphill battle. You guys are going to be both competing for that first page of Google and it's going to be a very hard journey when you're trying to rank for the same terms that this other person is ranking for. And chances are they were there first. So it could be a potential lawsuit or it's just not a good idea at all. So I would avoid using a brand name that is too similar to something that already exists. Make sure that it's very unique and that other people are not using it right now. The fourth SEO hack for finding a really good brand name is to use a free brand name generator tool. So there's a lot of these out there. One of my favorites is Shopify's. Uh, they have a brand name generator where you can just type in something like our example with hiking gear. I could type in hiking gear and see all these website domain names that are available, which is really great because you don't have to go through the hassle of typing in all of your ideas into, you know, GoDaddy or one of these websites. Uh, that sells domain names. Here you have a whole list of domain names that are available with the keywords that you want to target, which is great because you can just quickly scan through them and say, you know, oh, I like this one or this one's definitely not going to work. So this is a great way to just see all of your options all at once and you can play around with it and find a domain that works for you. The fifth SEO hack I have is to make sure that you get a domain name that ends in .com. And the reason for this is that 75% of the world uses .com, so it's the most common extension. And so this is going to be easier for your customers to remember, and this is going to lead to less typos, because if you choose a different extension, then your customer is going to have to remember this plus your brand name, and that's going to lead to some confusion, and maybe they're just not going to remember your brand name after all and not visit your website. So you wouldn't want that to happen. Most important of all is that Google ranks the .com extension slightly higher than other extensions. This has been found out uh, historically. So definitely I would say choose a .com if you have the choice. 
The only reason you would opt for something that is not .com is if you're trying to target a specific country and language, then that would be the exception to the rule and then it would be okay. The sixth SEO hack I have for choosing a brand name is to make sure that it is readable. Now, what do I mean by this? If you have an idea for a brand name or a domain name, well, you wanna make sure that you understand how it's gonna look in that URL field. So I recommend that you write it down on a piece of paper and don't use capitals because this is how it's going to look in Google or on a URL string. There are no capitals. So does it make sense? Is it readable? Are the words jumbled together? Is it kind of hard to decipher what is in this URL string? What, what is the brand name? I can't really tell because there's a lot of rep